It's the professional MasterChef quarterfinal. These six talented chefs came out top in their heats. Now, they will face two further challenges, which will put their skills on the line. I want to progress and see if I can go all the way. I'm not going to go out without a fight. I want to be the best, and I want to stand out of the crowd, and that's the reason I came to this competition. Hopefully, I'll bring my A game now, and you've really got to make a massive impression in the quarterfinal. First, they'll have to devise a dish from a specified ingredient. You very much hit the brief, so well done, you. Those who make it through will then have to put their own dishes up for scrutiny by three of the country's most daunting food critics. The smell is fantastic. I've got to say I'm incredibly excited. Only the best will earn a place in the knockouts. I want to be surprised. I want to be challenged. I want to eat well. Our chefs have got to start shining. I really want them to showcase their talent. Chefs, welcome to your quarterfinal. This is an invention test. Underneath the box in front of you is a key ingredient that is going to be the center point of your dish. Be creative, show us some flair, and show us why you are good enough to go through and cook for our critics. We will have to lose two of you at the end of this test. Chefs, reveal your ingredient. It's the humble onion. We all work with this ingredient every day in different forms, in different dishes. Behind us, a variety of different onions for you to choose and to build your dish with. Chefs, come up and choose your ingredients. The chefs must design their dish around a range of different onions and alliums. It's about understanding which onions have stronger flavors. Some are bitter, some are quite subtle. And it's about getting the balance right on the plate. I want the onion to carry the dish all the way through from start to finish. So our chefs are going to really need to team up other ingredients to make the onion stand out. They can also choose ingredients from a larder that includes a selection of meat, shellfish, vegetables, cheese, and a range of herbs and spices. I love onions. It is just far too many ideas in my head, and I just need to focus on one line. This is something that I do on a regular basis, every service, really, so I feel a bit more comfortable to what happens. An onion is so versatile. So, yeah, I'm going to really take that main ingredient and try and let it speak volumes. Chef, 70 minutes of cooking time starts now. London-based James comes from a family of chefs and currently works in corporate catering. A lot of my work on a day-to-day -day basis, thinking on your feet. I can have a lot of last-minute lunches. It's a very stressful minute-by-minute -minute job. So I'm hoping this task will be one that I will excel in. James, what's your dish? I'm going to make a little brown onion puree. I'm going to pickle down these little baby onions. Um, and then I'm going to glaze up the little roasted shallots. Um, I've got a few peas here and some morels. Almost going to keep it like a little fricassee, like with the onions. And I've got a duck breast, which I'm not too sure whether I'm going to use it yet. I can imagine the dish with the duck, but I'm struggling to know what it is without the duck. OK. But I'm interested. That's OK, for sure. Chef. Cheers. James is doing fricassee. Got some shallots on there. There's some peas and morels. I think the duck breast might be a good addition to this dish. He's going to use the winglet to make a sauce. It does sound delicious. The brown onion puree and the caramelization 
is really important. Give the onion a different dimension to the other onions on the plate. Head chef Malin stood out in his heat with his signature Sri Lankan scallop dish. I always want to be the best chef in the room <laughs> because you have to push yourself. You put so many hours for it and then you hear it from the best chefs in the country like Chef Monica and Chef Marcus and it makes you proud and makes you want to do more. Still got a smile on your face, I see. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. Hopefully it'll stay on. <laughs> <laughs> How are you finding it? Yeah, really good. I love onion, so I'm going to do different textures of onion. I'm going to have an onion broth with pickled onions, onion jam, and onion and potato bhaji on the side with some cheddar cheese. Marlin sounds interesting. Your style of cuisine, this challenge really falls right into your lap, and I just hope that you do the onion justice. Thank you very much. Thank you. Malin has got textures of onion. He's making a crispy onion and potato bhaji. I love bhajis. For me, a great bhaji has still got the sweetness of the onions and there's a bit of crispiness when they've been fried off. And then the sm spices or sometimes coriander through it. I really do love the sound of the broth. When you're bringing in spices, they need time to cook so they can infuse and all those flavors can come out. And I think this could make or break this dish. Chefs, 15 minutes gone. 20-year-old chef de partie Avraj made it to the quarterfinal with a classic halibut and white fish vermouth velouté dish. I want to show the judges that I'm not a one-dish wonder, that I've got a load more tricks up my sleeve, and age doesn't define my ability. So the dish is onions done three different ways. One is a velouté, one is a puree, and then also baby onions, which are charred. Then we've got a bit like a salsa thing, mm -hmm. but it's mushroom, pine nuts, chilli, and a stock syrup with parmesan crumb. I'm a little bit worried, if I have to be honest with you, because it just sounds like you've grabbed a load of onions and we're going to cook them and put them on a plate. You've got a table to go back to if you need to, but I'm intrigued. It's interesting. Average's dish, from what I understand, is an onion soup and with some textures of onion and a few vegetables in there, as well as a crumb. The parmesan or just cheese crumb will sit very nicely with the onion. We're always familiar with cheese and onion crisps, so we know it's a flavour that works. I think that you should pour the velouté around the little garnishes uh, in the middle of the plate. That could work. Israeli born Aviv bounced back from a poor skills test. His use of spices in his signature dish won him a place in the quarterfinals. I do tend to be freestyle and add a lot of different flavors from all over the world. If it's from Europe, the UK, South America, into my cooking, I'm looking forward to surprise them even more. How do you feel about the test? I was a bit lost at the beginning, but now I'm starting to get an idea of what I want to do. I'm going to just caramelize three types of onions here. I use them uh, as a garnish. It's going to be a pancake sitting in the middle of the plate. Nice. Meat on top. Yeah. I've added seasoning, which is turmeric, chili powder, Russell Hanout spice mix, which I love. That's what I'm going to try to do. It sounds delicious. I love the use of the spices. I'm curious how it turns out. I'm going to do my best to make it presentation-wise and flavor-wise uh, better than all the other dishes. Aviv's dish, he's making a pancake, uh, which he says he's got some spring onion running through it. It sounds interesting, it's different. Aviv has also cooked off some beef. It's got a seasoning of turmeric, razzle I like the sound of it, but I'm just going to question whether there's enough onion running through the dish. Brighton-based Kat has worked all over the world and brings flavors from her travels into her food. I enjoy about the job being creative. This is kind of my art, so I'm quite artistic. It's not the time to play safe. We just need to be brave enough and push it. Make them happy. How are we, Kat? 
a little bit nervous, um, but very happy that I can cook. What are you doing with the onions? I'm making kind of a sauce emulsion of onions with butter, a bit of pickling, roasted onions with some lovely roasted fried new potatoes there. I've got some amazing cockles here and uh, this all gonna turn out hopefully a lovely Mediterranean style of salsa. So like a soup and you've got your salsa and potatoes in the middle sort of thing, is that what I'm yes. sort of seeing? Yes, exactly, okay. exactly. It's interesting, it's different. I'm trying my best, Chef. Well, that's all we can ask. I do like the idea of the potatoes, the way she's baked them in the oven and she's gently crushed them and pan fried them with just a little bit of the spring onion. She's got the cockles as well, which she's put into a little salsa. She's got these tomatoes and, and a little bit of uh, chili. I really do like the look and sound of that. There's an onion sauce that Kat is making, almost like an onion butter sauce, but it can have a grainy texture if the onions are not passed out properly. My concern here is, does she have a clear vision of how this plate of food is going to be served? Chefs, you have 20 minutes remaining. Senior sous chef Tom has a passion for homegrown vegetables and foraging, which was reflected in his impressive signature cabbage dish. You get a massive buzz when you get a good comment from the judges. I really like thinking on my feet. Where I work is that's what you have to do. When you're going out and picking your vegetables and stuff, you have to think on your feet. So hopefully you should be quite comfortable, but we'll see what happens. <laughs> This invention test really does play to your strengths. Yeah. You know, the last dish that you gave us was all about cabbage. This one's all about onions. The problem you have, Tom, is you've got to live up to your last dish. Yeah. So, big question, what is your dish? So I'm going to do various types of onions. So pickled onions, uh, roasted Roscoff onion, I roast some spring onions as well, some wood bluets. I love going to pick mushrooms from where I work. And wild garlic grows in abundance around the restaurant, so I'm going to make a little gremolata out of that. Where does the pork loin come into it? Um, <laughs> you forgot about that, didn't you? <laughs> Obviously, I want it needs to be cooked right and perfect, but I want the vegetables to sing, really. The onion. Tom is just caramelising one of the Roscoff onions. You're getting that burnt effect onto the onions. So I can feel that we're going to get different levels of onion. So I'm intrigued with this dish. Tom is using wild garlic in a gremolata. I think it's a great contrasting flavour. It's just about getting the balance right, because wild garlic can be very strong and very overpowering. Chefs, we have two minutes left. You're going to have to move a bit quicker, some of you. Yes, that is it. Your time is up. First up is James. He has made roasted duck breast with a caramelized brown onion puree, glazed shallots, a grillot onion, morel, and pea fricassee and an onion and chai velouté. I'm really pleased you put the duck on the plate. It's beautifully cooked. You've got the caramelised onion puree on the plate. It's got a good texture to it. It's got good flavour. You've got the small pickled onions. You had the, the grillots in there. And then even had the onion running through the, the chive sauce. You've really taken the brief, you've used it to the best. And a lovely presentation as well, James. Good job. Last time I wanted to, to cry and, <laughs> and just be like, what have I done? But now I feel starting to pay off a little bit, so really happy. Malin's dish is textures of onion, roasted shallot petals, 
pickled red and white onions, an onion and chili jam, and an onion bhaji topped with cheddar cheese. Finished with a spiced onion and Earl Grey tea broth. I like the flavor of your broth. I'm getting the onion flavor and the spices. It's not too hot. And I like the flavor of the, the bhaji with the onion jam. But what I didn't like about the dish was the floating cheese once you put the broth onto it. I really like the broth. It's a bit of saltiness running through it. And I think that's important because you've got this jam which brings the sweetness to it. I like the pickling of the onions, but it's awkward to eat because they're so big. And also the amount of it is, is very overpowering. Oh, I am happy and then uh, a bit sad. But then again, I don't think I can do any more with the dish and I did the best I could. Avraj has made a mushroom and pine nut salsa with burnt baby onion petals, an onion puree, cavolo nero, pickled carrots, and an onion seed and parmesan crumb, finished with a white onion velouté. I like the texture of the crumb, and you've got the onion seeds running through that. The carrot, for me, doesn't bring anything extra to your dish. The onion velouté, yeah, you've got the sweetness of the, of the white onion running through it, but it's almost like a, a drizzle of sauce we, we have here, Avraj. Avraj, if you'd have taken maybe two elements away from this dish and then just really poured a whole jug full of that fabulous onion velouté onto the plate, and I think you'd have cracked it. Feeling very disappointed. At least I said the other way, it was nice. <laughs> Should have served more. Even when I was pouring, I was like, what am I doing? Should have gone like that. Aviv has served a spring onion and onion seed pancake, topped with harissa and Raz al Hanout spiced beef. Caramelized white onions and a tempura onion, finished with a garnish of tomato seeds and basil leaves. The meat with the spices, I love the flavors of the spices. The spring onion pancake is definitely too chewy and a bit dense. You could just taste a bit of sweetness through the tempura, but it's not very strong. Any other onions? Honestly, Aviv, where's the caramelized onion you're talking about? Because I couldn't taste it. The beef is interesting, the spices is interesting, and the idea is interesting. I find the pancake really rubbery. Can't taste onion, unfortunately. I don't think it is a representation of the onion. Disappointed. Today was a bad example of of me cooking. Cat's dish is crushed new potatoes with spring onions, a cockle, olive, onion, pine nut, and tomato salsa, burnt Roscoff onions, and an onion and cockle velouté sauce. Cat, the presentation, it just looks so heavy and messy. What I do like about this is the flavors of the potato and how you've cooked it. I like the flavors of the spring onion that, that come through. The white onion sauce has got a sweetness to it. So the flavors are there. You've got some of the raw onions. All together, it's a big hit. The clams are lost, which is a real shame. There's one thing you have got here, is you've got the flavor of onion running through the whole dish. I think what I'm struggling with, just piled everything on top of each other. So there's no clarity to the dish. It's not a surprise because I knew, I didn't have a clear idea all the way through. I just had lots of ideas. So, I agree. 
Finally, Tom has served pan-fried pork loin with roasted Roscoff onions, charred spring onions, pickled red onions, wild garlic gremolata, an onion puree, and an onion sauce. The charred Roscoff, the onion, is perfectly cooked through. It's lovely, it's soft. You've got the pickled onion, which brings a sharpness to it. The sauce is intensely rich with the onion that you've used through it. The pork's nicely cooked, but it works so well with everything on the plate here. I think you've incorporated onion very well into the dish. The sauce is big, it's bold, it's massive in flavour. The wild garlic works very, very well on the plate and it sort of splits it and brings it sort of all together. And you very much hit the brief, so well done you, Tom. It was amazing getting that feedback, so I feel quite proud of myself, really. I just need to not slow down and keep pushing. We had some good cooking in this kitchen, some chefs who really rose to the challenge. And I think it was very clear to see the chefs who were most comfortable with the challenge today. I felt that James's dish was the dish of the day. There wasn't one point of the onion that I didn't like on his plate of food. It worked very well, and I'm pleased he added the duck to his dish. Tom, for me, he really did highlight the onions that he used on the plate in various different ways. The cookings were very good. Here's a chef that really does understand the main key ingredient that we chose for him today, and I'm really pleased for him. James and Tom go straight through. We've got four chefs left and only two places to give. Aviv, I really felt that he'd miss the, the whole point of what we were looking for. Pancake with the spring onion running through, it was tough and chewy. A real disappointment, because I know what Aviv can accomplish. Malan's dish was interesting. I love the cheese with the onion bhaji and the, and the beautiful onion jam. That was a treat. I quite like the flavour of the broth, but I, I found the amount of pickled onion in there and then trying to cut it, it, it really did overpower this broth. I like the idea of cat's dish. I love the inclusion of the, of the clams onto the dish and those beautiful baked potatoes that she crushed. This plate of food just looked a mess. It all got muddled together and, and got very messy and you couldn't distinguish what you were eating once it mixed on the plate. Avraj served his dish with only a small amount of his soup. It was almost a, a sauce. I wish that Avraj had just put more of this velouté onto the dish. It could have been sensational. I've got so much more to give. They've only seen the smallest amount of what I'm careful of. This is my Olympics, you know. This is my first time going to the Olympics and I don't think you'll get a second chance to go to Olympics. So I really want to stay. Really, really means a lot. Even though today my performance wasn't at its best, I really, really hope to stay and show more of myself. I'm disappointed with my dish today, but it doesn't mean that I, I'm not hoping to go through to cook for the critics. Good effort today, some interesting ideas, and fascinating to see the way you're thinking. We have made a decision. Two of you are leaving us today. The first chef that is leaving us is... Aviv. Thank you, Aviv. The second chef leaving us today is... Kat. Thank you, Kat. Thank you. I totally agree with the judges. I just wasn't there today. It wasn't enough. I'm just not happy. I am very much disappointed to be living at this stage but I will go back cooking and, and do my own thing and hopefully open a new restaurant soon. 
Congratulations, you four. You now get to cook for our critics. Chefs, welcome back into the kitchen. Today, you're cooking for three of the leading food critics in the country. William Sitwell, Tracy McLeod, Amal Rajan. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity. Don't let it pass you by. Chefs, at the end of this, one of you will leave us and three of you will go through to join our final 12. Two courses in one hour and 15 minutes. Off you go. I've never really cooked for food critics in my career, so it's a bit of a first for me. That's what we get up in the morning for, for stuff like this, and pressure's a good thing. So, yeah, I'm really ready for it. Who guided you to, to do this? What was it, something you wanted to do or something they wanted you to do? Well, it all started from a drink in the pub. <laughs> always starts in the pub. It always it's starts in chefs. the pub. Yeah, so we were in the pub and someone said, what about Master Chef? So I thought, you know what, let's give it a go. So what are you cooking? I'm doing a starter, which is British asparagus with garlic aioli, parmesan, smoked egg yolk puree and some little forage herbs from the garden at work. Nice. And then for main course, I'm doing uh, lamb rump with burnt tomato puree, black olive puree, and then different types of allium. Well, I like the sound of your dishes, Tom. They sound fresh. Do you think they're good enough? Some of the cooking techniques are a little bit different, so, yeah, hopefully I'll stand out. Tom is cooking a very light asparagus dish, but it could pack a huge amount of flavour. The quantity of garlic in the aioli is really important, but it's not overpowering. You want to taste that asparagus. The egg yolk puree, too much smoking, and again, it will just be a flavour that overpowers the asparagus. It all needs to work in harmony. Rump of lamb has so much flavour in it. I like that Tom is going to water bath at first and then finish roasting it in pan. It's a great way to make sure that this lamb stays tender black olive puree, tomatoes and flavours that work very well. It's a great sounding dish. I'd order this if I read this on the menu. There are a lot of ingredients on the whole table. <laughs> yes, Chef, and some more in the fridge. <laughs> what are we cooking? I'm making a steamed cod with seafood broth. I'm going to put some sea vegetables and a few mussels in there as well. That would be the starter. And then for the main course, I'm going to be doing some ribeye beef with potato curry, parsley and a coconut sambal, jackfruit and bultial, which is a soured braised curry. I'm going to do a little puri bread to go on there as well. Puri bread to go with it? Yeah. That's a lot of work. It is in there, sure. OK. Wow. Wow. I really can't wait to try this, and I'm sure our critics will be looking forward to it. But do you think you can get all this done? Yes, Chef. Do you? Yes, Chef, I'm going to do it. Have you got some cooks coming to help you? <laughs> no, Chef, just by myself. Making a broth is an incredibly skillful thing to do. It's about the layers of flavour that you're putting into the pan. And with all the different dried fish that he's put into that stock, I'm sure it's going to taste delicious. Malin's second dish is beef ribeye steak, and that's the simplest part of this dish because it's being served with a potato curry, jackfruit and brutel, which is sort of soured curry that's going on here. We have a coconut parsley sambal. I like the accompaniment of the puri bread, uh, which is normally a deep fried crispy bread and then used to soak up the curry. It sounds delicious. What I'm most worried about is timing, because I have a lot of elements on both my dishes. And I've practiced, but still it comes very close to the time, so I'm going to be running today.
I love this menu. This is like food that if I got my own place, this is everything that I'd say is me. Simple, executed very well, old school methods with new ideas. Avaraj, what are you cooking for us and the critics today? So the first course will be fillet of beef with potato foam, foie de bit cannelloni. I'll be doing a shallot puree and pickle shallots as well. There'll be some morels and a red wine sauce with that. My dessert will be a raspberry souffle and a hazelnut anglaise on the side of that. Get away. Nice. Yeah. No way. Have you practised it? Yeah, I've practised in souffle, yeah. Happy with it? I'm very happy with my okay, souffle. OK, now we're talking. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, I like the sounds of this menu. Thank you very much, Go yes. for it. Beef fillet for me, medium rare. I want to see it lovely and golden roasted on the outside. Mm -hmm. It's got to be rested. Avraj is taking the crispy pastry, he's making a round case of it, and then he's going to fill it with a, a potato foam. That foam has got to have enough body and strength to hold together that it doesn't just flop all over the plate. You have to have nerves of steel to cook a souffle anytime, but to do it in this round for the critics, hats off to Avraj. The making of the meringue is really important that it gets that sugar and egg white texture combination working just right. Flavour of the raspberry running through it. To the making of an anglaise, you roast the hazelnuts down, get that infused into the milk before you make your anglaise. It's been cooking for a place in the final 12 today. Um, it's something that dreams are made of. This would be the pinnacle of my career. I'll be ecstatic if I get through today. What are you cooking? For our main course, um, I'm going to be doing a roasted rump cap of beef with a little bone marrow mash, give it a nice meaty, beefy flavour. And then I'm going to be serving some Girolles, uh, little pea puree, summer peas, pea shoots. And I'm going to finish that with a brown butter bone marrow verde. And then for dessert, I'm making a caramel chocolate cheesecake. So it's not a cheesecake, it's set in a, in a mould in a nice little slab, so it's going to be set inside a bowl. Strawberry jelly on top of that. I'm making a nice little hazelnut crumble. Have they tried and tested these dishes? Yes, Chef. I've been using um, the guys I've got around me to taste my dishes, to give me a little bit of critical feedback, whether it's good or bad. This particular cut of beef, he has to be very careful with, because if it's, it's undercooked, it can be quite tough. His sauce is a verdi, which is a green sauce. He's making it from parsley, and he's putting some bone marrow into that as well. It sounds delicious. It really will work well with the beef rub cap. James is making a cheesecake. He's got a few things to set. He's got the cheesecake to get made and set. He's got the jelly to set as well. And he's also got a curd to get cooked and set as well. There's a lot of work to get done here. Chefs, you've got 15 minutes till the first course is served. At this stage of the competition, you need something a bit original, something a bit inventive, and something that shows some genuine flair. We've eaten a lot of great food in this room. I guess we're here to try and differentiate the really good from the truly great. When it comes to food, I don't mind being experimented on. I don't mind being a guinea pig. But the chefs need to remember that I'm a guinea pig with sharp teeth. I'm a guinea pig that bites back. Tom, how's it looking? Yeah, about ready to start painting, Chef. I have to say, you're looking very calm. I don't feel it inside, Chef. You know. <laughs> the garlic aioli, the smoked egg yolk puree, the parmesan crisp, these are all strong flavours. So I think the challenge for him will be to get the balance so that they don't overwhelm the asparagus. Come on, come on, Tom. Now we are going to start speeding him up. Puree, that's the last thing. Yes, Chef. Smoked egg is quite a trendy thing. We are seeing it, aren't we, quite a lot these days. If you can put all that together, it'll be great. Are you happy with it? Yes, Chef. 
<clears throat> really happy with it. You ready to go? Yeah. You go. Smile, put your head up. You should be proud if you're happy with it. Bye. Thank you. Thank you very much. Here I've got a few uh, British asparagus with a garlic aioli, smoked egg yolk, parmesan, and just some forage herbs from work. Hope you enjoy. Thanks, Tom. Thank you. This dish has an elegant modesty that I really appreciate, actually. I like the fact that all of the, the different flavours are quite tempered. And the asparagus is, I think, absolutely beautifully cooked. The star of this for me is the smoked egg yolk. Silky, subtle flavour. Really, really good. And the aioli, it's got, just got a gentle breath of garlic through it. Very nice. If the basic test of a dish is, do you want lots more? I mean, I do want lots more of it. I really like this dish. The asparagus, for me, is, is, is wonderfully cooked. Love the yolk. What we do have here is a very nice plate of food. How was that? Pretty daunting. <laughs> 15 minutes for the next course, Tom. Are you going to be on time? Yeah, yes, Chef. Just got to peel these tomatoes and get the lamb ceiling off. The key thing here is, of course, the lamb rump. Is it cooked well? Is it tender, well rested? Then it could be good. How's the lamb cooked? Yeah, I think it's nice. Oh, I'm happy with that. I'm gonna have to start moving a bit faster now. Ooh, ooh. Tom for his main has got a lamb rump, black olive puree, burnt tomato puree, hen of the woods, roasted and pickled onions, and a lamb jus. There is a lot going on here. I really hope Tom allows the lamb to breathe, have its own space. What could otherwise be a slightly overwhelming dish. Sauce and that's it? Yes, Chef. Head up, smile, say thank you. Right, you've got a roasted lamb rump with roasted Roscoff onion, a spring onion, some little pickled onions, a goat's curd, a burnt tomato ketchup, which has just been lightly smoked, and a black olive puree. And some hen of the woods just cooked in some emulsion. Hope you enjoy. Thank you. Thank you. That lamb rump's really good. It's cooked to perfection. It's got really intense uh, flavour. It's tender and it's delicious. I like that smoked tomato sauce a lot. And that and the olive and the lamb have got the makings of something really sensational. The pickled onion doesn't add anything. The mushrooms are a bit sort of null. It doesn't come together as a great dish should do. There's lots of good stuff there, but this dish lacks a certain amount of finesse. I love the cooking of the lamb. It's lovely and pink. I think it's been seasoned really well. There's a lot of work that's gone into this, but I just think there's just one or two things that are not needed. I've never ever done anything like that in my life. It's, it's insane. But all in all, it was, yeah, it was OK. Malin? Yes, Chef? We have two minutes left. Yes, Chef. Are we going to be on time? Yes, Chef. Are you sure? Yeah. Good. Marlin starter, steamed cod loin and spiced seafood broth. It sounds like the kind of thing you'd get in a very aspirational restaurant. There are two things, really, that he's, he's got to get right. The cod loin has got to be really beautifully cooked, and then all the other things can't be lost in it, because there's nothing worse than the tempura of monk's beard, and by the time you eat it, it's gone soggy. Right, Marlin, your time is up. Yes, chef. Yes, bro. <laughs> Just the stock? Yeah. Oh, that smells good. Go, Marlin, go! Nice. Looks really good. Smells amazing. Hello. Hi. Hi. Thank you. Thank 
Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. For your start, I cooked you a steamed cod and some sea vegetables and mussels with the spiced uh, seafood broth. Please do enjoy. Thank you, Thank very, you very much. much. The smell is fantastic. Very, very kind of modestly presented, but exquisitely presented thing. I've got to say, I'm incredibly excited. That broth doesn't taste of any of the spice that we're hoping for. That mushroom, it's just a lump of mushroom. It just feels like a sort of appendage to the dish. The broth, it tastes quite bland. There's no kind of umami depth to it at all. I'm afraid I disagree with you. This is a very welcoming dish to me. I've got warmth, depth and flavour. You know, it's a wonderful thing that you can do with an old dried up fish's head, is turn it into something that's quite so fantastic. The broth is absolutely delicious and I love the lightness and the freshness of the garnishes. I think he's absolutely nailed it on this starter. Marlon, you've got three minutes left. Beef's looking good. Thank you, Chef. Marlin's main course really appeals to me. It's like one of those all-you-can-eat buffets <laughs> where you basically just say, yeah, I'll have all of it, and you're spooning. <laughs> I have the ribeye, I have the potato curry, I have the sambal, <laughs> all of it. Beef is going on. What's next? I've got the coconut sambal. I'm a bit worried that while I respect the ambition, there could be a bit too much going on here. How many more things have you got to add to the plate? I, just the sauce and the puri bread, chef, and uh, some leaves to go on. Come on. Okay. Yeah, chef. What's this? Curry leaf oil, chef. Oh. Sauce as well? Is that going on the side? Yeah. Looks good, Marlon. You happy? Yeah, very happy, okay. chef. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. I've made you a uh, ribeye beef with uh, potato curry, parsley and coconut sambal, and jackfruit and bultial with the puri bread and a bone marrow curry sauce. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much indeed. I absolutely love that curry potato. The sauce is just singing with lemongrass and it just jumps alive. I like the coconut sambal. The bit that surprised me was that delicious jackfruit curry with a crispy, chewy puri. What is this chunk of beef that is completely out of proportion on the plate doing? You could have quite easily put that beef on the side and you'd have a coherent plate of food. I love this dish. I like his ideas. Got a traditional piece of ribeye cooked in a classic way with all these amazing flavours that sit around the outside. <laughs> It's a dish that, for me, tastes best when you're having a little bit of everything uh, together. Delicious. I just hope that they would like my flavours, because I'll be proud of it and I won't beat myself up for it's not good enough, it's not good enough every time. <laughs> James, you've got five minutes left before we have to serve. Are we OK? Yeah, I'm a little bit behind, Chef. What's the hold-up here? Yeah, I've gave myself a lot to do. Um, okay. Just, it sounded like you had a lot to do. <laughs> just putting everything together now. Just got to do my duals and it's basically plating up. So. I really like the idea of James's main course. He's got brown butter sloshing around with bone marrow, which he's then spicing up a bit as a verde. Right, James, you're going to have to really motor now. Yes, yeah, sure. chef. What is it now? Carve the beef? Carve the beef, verde, then go, chef. Verde, go. Rump cap of beef. It should have a little bit of fat and a nice sinew above it. Hopefully that fat will just melt through and give it a really deep and intense flavour. Happy with the cooking? Yes, chef. 
I would definitely order this if I saw it. I think it sounds beautiful. You're now three minutes over, OK? Yes, Chef. Let's go, James. Yes, Chef. We good? Yes, Chef. Well done. Off you go. Good afternoon. Hello. Good afternoon, James. You look scared. <laughs> Nervous. Today I've cooked for you a um, roasted rump cap of beef with a little bone marrow mashed potato, uh, English peas, girolles and a little parsley, brown butter, bone marrow verde. Thank you. The beef is beautiful, soft, tender, deeply flavoured. The mash is, is great. You've got the lovely texture of the peas and the pea puree. I actually really like this. I think the salsa verde is delicious. I think it's got depth of flavour and it's salty and it really goes nicely with the beef. The mash is delicious. It's got a real buttery, silky warmth to it. Everything about it works perfectly. The beef is beautiful and tender. The puree is nice and smooth and beautifully made. The sauce verde is delicious, but you want more of it. Yeah, James. Yeah, that was good. Um, you got 15 minutes left. Is your dessert going to be on time? Yes, chef. Okay. We've got caramel. We've got chocolate. We've got strawberry. We've got hazelnuts. This sounds like sort of kids' party food for grown-ups. Chocolate and strawberry could work really nicely. The hazelnut crumble is a, is a nice contrast in terms of texture. I'm incredibly excited about every single element of this. Right, we have 60 seconds, James, to finish off. What's left to go? Uh, the curd. Happy? Yes, Chef. All right, off you go. Thank Smile. You. For dessert, I've given you a caramel chocolate cheesecake, strawberry jelly, hazelnut crumble, a little strawberry curd, some compressed strawberries, toasted hazelnuts, and some lemon balm crisp. Thank, Thank you. What I love about this dish is the richness of the strawberry, and then you've got the jelly crunch of the crumble. It's beautiful, and then you've got the softness of the chocolate caramel. There's only one thing that I'd like more of, and that's more intensity, a deeper rush of love in terms of chocolate. The great thing about it for me is that crumb, it's absolutely gorgeous. It's like the dream crumble. Those compressed strawberries really, really pack a punch. I think this is exquisite. I think James is uh, clearly an exceptionally talented chef. The cheesecake is lovely. It's got a, a saltiness running through the, the caramel chocolate in there. It's smooth, and the sharpness that he's put through the strawberry jelly cuts through the richness. It's a nice dessert. I would enjoy eating it, but it just uh, lacks a bit of wow factor for me. That was crazy. That was the maddest hour and 15 minutes of my life. I absolutely loved cooking there today. It was. Um, it's a real, like, moment in my career to stay cooking for these critics. Two minutes, Avraj. Oui, Chef. Looking good. Everything on this menu is very simple. So I have a feeling this may be a bit chefy and a bit fancy. I was having fun about ten minutes ago. And yeah. now you're not having fun? I'm having even more fun. <laughs> It all comes down to whether or not he can cook a beautiful piece of beef. Medium rare, I'd like it. Well rested. It's very important, that. Are you happy with that cooking? I'm happy with that, Chef. What worries me a little bit is potato foam. I like potato that you can bite into. I don't like the idea of a potato sort of emulsion. 
quick, 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 come on. <sighs> I'm just what? a bit concerned about the blood on that beef. Hello. Hi. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. What I have for you today is a fillet of beef, shallot puree, pickle shallots, just some comfy meals, foie de cannelloni, and potato foam served with the red wine sauce. This is the classic dish that you get in English pubs, isn't it? It's a bit of beef with a very strong chefy jus. My huge piece of beef is actually a little bit tough, so I'm struggling with it. But what this chef is good at is sauce. That jus, that gravy, is deliciously deep and rich and really good. The pomme puree, which has been sort of foamed up, is almost like 50% butter. It's gorgeous. The trimmings were nice, but they were tiny. They barely registered. Sort of steak and mashed potato, well done, is just not enough to really wow me at this sort of stage of the game. Unfortunately, the beef hasn't been well cooked because it's just bleeding all over the plate. I really like the potato mousse that's in the crispy pastry case. The shallot puree has got nice flavour through it, but um, there's not a lot else here to work with. So it's a bit of a disappointment. Right. You've got 15 minutes for your souffle. Oi, oh, chef. Souffle, that is a way of saying I'm good enough, isn't it? He will know that people like us are tough on souffles that don't work. The hazelnut anglaise, are we going to be letting it melt through the top of the souffle, let the whole thing deflate while we kind of, you know, tuck in? Avraj, you have one minute left. How's it all looking? I think I'll be one minute behind, Chef. What's the delay? Uh, just super cooking, Chef. They're definitely rising. They're looking good. You better be quick with that sauce. The souffles look ready to come out. Good, Chef. You happy with those? Very happy, Chef. OK, going to have to go quick. Yep. <sighs> my goodness me. Oh, my god, wow. That's risen nicely. Thank you. For your second course, I have a raspberry souffle and a hazelnut anglaise. Thank you. Enjoy. Thanks. Thanks. I think this souffle is perfectly decent. I think it's well risen. I think it's got an ideal texture. To me, this souffle is on the sweet side, almost to the point of tasting like a kind of synthetic raspberry sweet. And the creme anglaise is not quite sweet enough. Somehow, together, it balances. He promised a souffle. He delivered a souffle. I think, in terms of, is he a good chef? Yes. Does he need to do more and dazzle more to progress? Very likely. But the souffle is really good. It's risen, it's got beautiful raspberry colour. It would have been nice if it had maybe some raspberries at the bottom or maybe a little bit of liqueur running through some part of the dish. I'd say uh, the dishes maybe be a bit simple, but I tried doing skill in the dishes. So I'm very happy with them, yeah. That was a good round from our four chefs. It's a really interesting cookie. The critics loved Tom's starter. They thought this asparagus was delicious. They loved all the different elements. Who didn't? It was delicious. Tom's main course was a very different picture compared to the first one. It looked on the rough side. The lamb was beautifully cooked, and there's a huge amount of work that had gone into this plate. There's just maybe one or two things that he didn't need. Marlin really did hit the ground running. He had two great dishes. And I'm really pleased that he got all of the work done 
We really enjoyed Malin's broth and cod dish. The critics weren't that blown away by it. I liked his main course. I thought it was really clever and exciting, something very different, and he got the balance right. Everything on James's main course was beautifully executed. The rump cap is such a difficult piece of beef to get right, and he did a good job with it. The cheesecake he set in a bowl, the lovely caramel with a bit of salt to running through it. It was good, it was tasty, very delicious. The critics agreed with us about James. He cooked well. Average's main course, I just felt there could have been more uh, done to make this an exciting plate of food. Average's beef wasn't rested or cooked properly. It was bleeding more than it should. The souffle packed the flavours off raspberry, which is what you want. I thought he did a good job for the dessert. Going through and coming out, say it's 50-50. More than anything, I want to get through to the knockouts. This is not a chance that you get every day. I'll be really happy and proud if I get through it. But if not, I've been in such a learning curve and I've took, I'll take so much away from it. Still feel I've got a lot to give in the competition. I just want to go as far as I can, I really do, so. They've all done a great job. Unfortunately, we've got to send one of them home. That was an intense cook-off. You all put a huge amount of work and effort into your cooking today. Good job, well done. However, we can only take three of you through. The chef that is leaving us is... Avraj. Go, gents. I feel gutted, but on a scale of one to ten, I don't think ten even marks how much I've enjoyed myself here. So, just chin up, just keep going. <laughs> it is the best moment of being a chef in my career. It's in my life as well. I don't think I've done anything better than that before. Today was one of the hardest days I've ever had in the kitchen. It was insane. It's really tiring, it's just physically draining, and, but it's so much fun. I'm lost for words, really ecstatic, over the moon. Just can't wait to get my teeth into the next round, so. Well done. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers, guys. Well, well done. Next time, six more professionals compete for a place in the quarter final. Go on. Might not be healthy, but it'll be delicious. Yeah, we don't care in here. I love French cooking. Marcus hates French food. Really? No. 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 <laughs> this is quite remarkable. Absolutely delicious.